Hello, what's up? We're going, we're going quick. A uh, little bit of something to do in the sky before heading off to our third dungeon of the game. Um, I do like the setup for this dungeon. I like that it's, uh... I like that, you know, it's it's another location that's a, it's, it's a location. It's not a temple or a dungeon. It is a, it is a mining facility. But then I also like how our goal here is not to get to the end of it. All we're trying to do... It, it's interesting, right? Because normally, all Zelda dungeons are about getting a thing at the end of the dungeon. We're not trying to get anything at the end of this dungeon. What are you, we're, just, we're just simply trying to travel from one location to another. We're just trying to get to the Temple of Time over yonder. Um, so this is one of those... A, a very rare moment of uh, not needing to go into a dungeon to get anything. We're just trying to, we're using it to travel. It's just a um, travel point in between here and another place. So I think that's interesting. Um, anything that make, make any extra context given around dungeons, I always appreciate. Uh, so what we're gonna be doing here, I'm gonna be jumping all over the place and uh, getting these goddess chests. One's on, on Beetle's Island, but thankfully we don't need to uh, take his shop there. And then one right over here. And then what we're going to be doing, the guide actually recommended this. I am going to actually follow along with... I, I will be taking this little bit of advice because I had just totally forgotten. Uh, we can... We have tumbleweeds now. We can go upgrade more stuff. I didn't even think I was going to... My, my thought was, oh, I'll just hop right into the next dungeon. But... Uh, not the case. So I'm gonna sort out all this stuff and I'll see you at where the first chest is. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna be doing here is, uh, she upgrading our wooden shield. To make it the best one. <clears throat> gonna take quite a bit of, uh, stuff, but that's fine. Go for it. Okay. I wonder what else we can upgrade. Might as well check over here. It does look really cool. I like, oh, it has a bird, metal bird symbols on it now. That's cool. Okay, what else do we got? Oh, that used all our tumbleweeds. Why does everything need tumbleweeds? Still can't do that one, no dust relics. Oh, we can upgrade the beetle? Improve your beetle with a burst of speed. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll do that, right? I should go run and get two tumbleweeds. I might actually, honestly, I might do that. Go for it. Okay. I didn't know we, I didn't even know we could upgrade the beetle, so that's cool. Quick beetle. Oh, it flies faster. Nice. You can upgrade it. What? More? Further improve your beetle with a longer flight time. I mean, that seems really unnecessary, but it's kind of cool, right? We can we upgrade the bag. Allows your bomb bag to carry 10 instead of 5. Seems kind of unnecessary. I already think having 15 is more than enough. <laughs> sure. 
sure. I think it's cool. Sure, why not? Go for it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Tough beetle. Neat. There's no more, right? Yeah. Okay. No, that's that's all she wrote for that. Um. Okay. Neat. Actually, we're going to be picking up something here in a sec that I actually want to have equipped, so... I'm going to be putting this away for now. Um, okay, so I will see you... Nice. I do like, like the visual changes with upgrading stuff. I, th I think it is actually really cool. Because our beetle looks sick now. I think I think the first stage, it just kind of got more patterns. But now, our beetle looks... Speed up now? Hallelujah. <laughs> and now we don't have to slowly watch it glide through the air. It actually goes at a reasonable speed. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Okay, with that, I'm gonna be going to collect all of these uh, chests around here now that we did that. I'll see you in a moment. Whoa! Oh! Almost missed it. There was also a place to fall inside, but no reason to do that yet, I don't think. Yeah, you just get a heart medal, which... Oh, well, you carry this, hearts will appear with greater frequency. Now, that might actually seem worth it to you, because... I would say that that definitely is a, um, a somewhat worthwhile medal, if you've been having trouble, because I don't know if you've noticed, we don't get hearts very often <laughs> in this game. Compared to all the other games, hearts don't drop out of plants and stuff like usual. It's kind of strange. So, that might be, uh pretty good thing to have. Anywho, I'll catch you at the next chest. Well, this one looks a bit different. Oh, oh this is this is where Beetle's uh, shop lands. Oh, I guess there's not something you need to be here at night for? Other than to get the fireflies, I suppose. Yeah, this is actually pretty nifty to pick up right away, because now we got one more full heart. And I think with that, I think we've completed the first row of hearts already. Which is, I mean, but we started with six, so it's actually not that impressive. It's just uh, a fact of the matter. Alright guys, how we doing? You can actually bump into these guys and throw them off, which is pretty intense. Nice. Is this just another one that we uh, climb down to? I guess so. Oh, we've been to this one before. There's two on this. Huh. Oh, much like the Great Sea, if you look out, there's just nothing as far as the eye can see. It can be a little spooky. Ooh. Oh, I see. Imagine if I didn't have a bomb. Ooh. Money. 
more money is never bad, since money is is particularly useful in this game. There's a lot more things than almost ever before to spend money on. So it's definitely worth getting when you, when you can. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go down to Lanayu, and I'm going to pick up some tumbleweeds. I don't know how quickly or efficiently I'll be able to do that. But then I'm going to teleport up. Uh, I'm going to upgrade the bug net, and I'm going to teleport back down. I'll see you after this whole ordeal is over. Crud, I did need another ancient flower. Crud. I, I... I'll be right back. Oh, the pain. Oh, the misery. Literally, one right here. <laughs> right in the corner. If I just look down here. Primary. Here we go. Go for it. Um, big butt bug net, double its original size, makes it cat easier to catch even the most nimble bugs. Nice. You can't upgrade it again. No, only one upgrade for that. I understand. I mean, like, I could just do this, because, like, why not, right? <laughs> can't do anything with that yet? Sure, why not? Go for it. I had the stuff for it. <laughs> Haven't needed most of that stuff for anything else. Nice. Ooh. Wait, hold on. What was what was the th oh, yeah. third tier of bomb bag? <laughs> More lizard tails, hornet larva. That's actually doable. I know where these kinds of enemies are. But, uh, that's fine. Okay, and now we're doing the dungeon. <laughs> How long is it into, into my recording? Oh my gosh, 24 minutes into my recording. I, yeah, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you. Other than I am bad. I'm a bad noodle. And here we go. One more dungeon. No temple, no dungeon, just a just a mining facility. A long, long abandoned one too. You know, normally we have spiders in uh, eventually as as a theme in our dungeons, but uh, first time we've seen some some scorpions, that's for sure. And to fuel this leg of the adventure in, <laughs> as per tradition at this point, I have, I have, I have willed it to be tradition, uh, I do have a boba tea. I have my classic rose red black tea. I'll crack open that right now. Hopefully it doesn't explode like my last one did. Just scrub it. Lots of freaking shame. I think this dungeon theme is kind of popping off, isn't it? A lot more intense than usual. No thanks. Oh, the slingshot actually kills these guys. That's good to know.
Please don't be scorpions on the ceiling. <laughs> we can swarm the rupees. If I had a rupee for every time we opened a chest just to get 20 rupees, I would have probably 20 rupees. No real strategy to this little scorpion babies. They're kind of just what they are. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's not gonna work. Oh, duh. I forgot, like, we... Now, I will say, I guess something of note. Now, in every single area so far, right? We get an- we have gotten an item outside, which has only been two other areas, to be fair. But we would get an item outside, and then we would get- uh, out- like, outside of a dungeon, leading up to it. And then we'd get a, an item for the inside of the dungeon. I think it's interesting that in this one, they kind of just doubled up on the beetle. Granted, the beetle was also the thing they were advertising, like, all the advertisements for this game were showing off that beetle. Nintendo, Nintendo gets like that a lot, where they'll inter introduce something. It'll be in all the marketing, it'll be like the main focus of the game. It's like, hey, look at this, like, around the game. All the focus around the game will be like, like, you know, like, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, the mouthful mode, which I don't think is that interesting. The mouthful mode, to me, all, all it does is replace other powers that are normally just in Kirby games to begin with. Um... But all the marketing and, and everything in the game is always pushing that, oh look at this, it's mouthful mode, isn't this so cool? That's how I kind of feel about the beetle. I don't dislike the beetle, and I think once you get the pincers, it's really cool. And like having the upgrades for it, upgrades for it make it way better. But like, why did they just make it slow? Is, is having it just be able to speed up faster to get things done faster? Is that really like a meaningful upgrade? Same thing with the uh, longer flight time. Is that a meaningful upgrade? All that kind of feels like was that they, they, they intentionally made the item worse. Just like worse and not, not worse. Instead of having a, an item be really good and useful, um, and then ha and then give it something on top of that to uh, to repurpose it to make it even more interesting. They made they made an item that is kind of interesting. They made it intentionally weak in two departments, and then made you have to upgrade it to make it like to get it to where it should have just get to get it to where it feels like it should have been to begin with. You know, it's kind of strange. Oh, we got more of these guys. Oh. Wait, what? Whoa, this guy's doing a full heart of damage is pretty rough, I will say. I I mean, I walked up to him and then he immediately attacked before I could even swing. I don't know. That kind of happens a lot with the enemies, um, particularly the the Deku Babas and the uh, and those guys. Both kind of have a thing where oh, these guys drop good. Hmm. I'm sorry, monster fluid. I don't know what the point of pushing those is yet. I'm not really getting mining for- well, I mean, there's like a bunch of technology and stuff. I'm sure we'll probably see some machinery or something in a bit.
What are we trying to do here, though? Wait, I can't- I can't climb onto that? That's crazy, it's right there. Hmm. <coughs> Interesting. Let me, let me, let me think about this for a moment. While I crack into this boba. Is this it? That was... <laughs> wait, that was like... Wait, hold on. Jumping up this... Is like the same exact height as jumping up that... As jumping up that. Weird. All right, if you say so. I mean, we are we are trying to run through a very dilapidated uh, mining facility, so it it would it does make sense that we'd have to sort of make our own path here. One moment. Okay, let's get this tea. It did not explode. I was fast enough. You know what's a shame about this boba place, though. I can't get jasmine tea anymore. At least I can't get jasmine milk tea anymore, which is one of my favorites. They just won't do it anymore. And the one time I was able to, like, put in special instructions, like, make a milk tea, put this in it, um, they then removed that option on the jasmine tea. <laughs> it's like, it's like the one time I got them to make it a milk tea, they were like, okay, nope, don't want to do that anymore. It was weird that that was like a transitionary door, considering most of the other doors are like <clears throat> most like most of the other dungeons have had um like doors that like aren't even actual like doors that you like walk into and wait for it to shut with the animation and stuff. Most of the other ones are just like have hallways leading into each and every room. That was an actual like transition right there. It's kind of odd. Methinks that we have another case of one floor, three or four rooms. Maybe not, though. Might speak too soon. This, not that this room has much going on in it. It's a bunch of straight tracks, but uh, that at least that, that at least makes more sense for a mining facility. Although I don't know why. These robots don't seem like they would have a bunch of bottomless pits in their mining facility. That seems like a workplace hazard. But Oh no, monster fluid. My fluid! No! Oh, do the bombs blow up the crates? Crud. I was trying to speed up, but if you press both of the triggers at the same time, you, uh... Oh, you can't speed up when you have a bomb in your mouth. But that's exactly when I would want to speed up. What? What? Oh... I let go of one thing and you have to hold down both. Here we go. Okay, wait, if those get blown up with bombs, then hold on. It's like an autosave too. It's very strange. <laughs> And they respawn some of the enemies, but not all of them.
Oh, just money? Okay, just wanted to make sure that it wasn't like, uh... Oh. Yeah. Gotta do this again. <clears throat> just wanted to make sure it wasn't a, uh... Case of needing to... Like, I, I didn't... I wanted to make sure that, that that wasn't how you get the key or something. I don't know how that got both of them. It was like two horizontal slashes, but okay. Uh, if you if you notice if you if you like reach over to the left or the right, you can get up here anyways. <laughs> but or or you can pretend like you're trapped. I'm trapped. I guess you can do that too. Okay. Guess I'm going right back. Weird. They really wanted to cram. I don't know about the dungeon design. They really wanted to cram as much in pos as possible into like as few rooms as possible. So they literally just like put a chest sitting out in the open with very minimal things blocking you from getting to it. And then they have you immediately backtrack. It's strange. Oh, I wonder what this is gonna be. Oh. Okay, so when they're not inflated, they explode on hit. That's good to know. Uh, okay, yeah. <clears throat> oh, I see a time crystal hanging on the ceiling. I wonder what they use. They call them time shift stones. But their intention wasn't for them to make time shifts, right? Because they... They were, all, they were in the past. Why would they need to be working... Why would they need to go to like the further pass than where they already were at, right? Oh, okay. I get you, I get you, hold on. And then I stay here. You know what? I do take back what I said about the uh, the beetle though, being a spinner equivalent. You use it way more than the spinner, for sure. Then the music changes, and we really get to see what this place is like. This is really cool, though. I mean, when they introduce the time shift stones outside, and then you realize you're about to go into a dungeon. Like, you know, it, it really sets up for a really cool reveal of getting to see what this place is really like. It's Beemos. I, li I like how um, the Beemos look in this game. They kind of look like uh, totem poles, sort of. Ancient security me mechanism. The weak point is the eye. The eye is also a weapon that fires a focused energy beam. 100% failure rate at any attempt to strike the eye with your sword while it is still on top of the pedestal. We'll see about that, Fee. <laughs> Conversely, you could lower its head to a height your sword could reach. I like how they updated Beemos's. I think it's pretty cool. 
the basically totem poles that you have to uh, cut te cut down to your size. <laughs> Whoa! Uh, oops, I, I don't was not trying to slash in that way. They're not hard to deal with, but it is it is a fun little uh, little skill test for sure. I think. I think one thing they did in this game was they replaced they replaced having a lot of puzzles with having uh, having just more skill tests if you know like just having more um, action segments between fighting and, and having like little gauntlets like that. It's sort of like if if they if they kind of made like every temple a little bit more leaned more towards um leaned a little bit more towards the shadow temple from Ocarina of Time and then something like I don't know like the water temple water temples in any game <laughs> in any of the games which are usually pretty hev like heavily puzzle focused or where like a majority of the dungeon is a puzzle. You run up the up the slopes faster. Whoa! Ow, I like how they don't shoot like one laser beam. They shoot like uh, like one quick shot that like tases you. Oh, you know what? For some reason it didn't have this equipped. Another key? Is that the idea? Hmm. Yeah, okay. I like how the music was already like pretty, uh, <clears throat> pretty high energy compared to most Zelda dungeons, but then it like really ramps up. You change time. That was just, to, that was just to unlock that. Oh, there was one. There was a thing higher. I didn't even. <laughs> I'm so silly. I didn't even notice. I am, uh, not particularly observant today, am I? Maybe I used, I used all my, all my brain, brain think juice on, uh, the, the whole desert area leading up to this. Oh, and then look at that, and we're right back to the old... Yeah, oh, they actually, like, remove the, the, a lot of the instrumentation, a lot of the, uh, soundscape. When you go back to the past. Interesting, so we got scorpions, we got ancient robots, and we have pufferfish. I don't, I don't understand the pufferfish draw. But, uh... Crud, what? Ow.
Well, you know what? Joke's on you, game. I actually wanted to come be, to be down here. <clears throat> to get this blue feather. <laughs> actually, I did just use blue feathers to upgrade the bomb bag, so... I, w I will take more blue feathers. Shortcuts all day, every day, thank you. Oh, you know what? I need to check to make sure I know if there's anything, anything special we need to make sure we collect before we <coughs> finish this dungeon. The main item, dungeon map. Nope. No heart piece. So just a heart piece in the first dungeon. Strange. It's both strange that Twilight Princess had heart pieces in dungeons to begin with, and then it's especially strange that this game only has the one case of that. So far, anyways. So we're just worrying about a straight dungeon here. I do appreciate how, um... Oh, it's the item! Yeah, this is this is the item I was poking fun at before when I remembered. I, I, I had forgotten that this item was even a thing. That's how silly and, and, and like, virtually useless this item is. Uh, it, it only has uses in, like, this dungeon and maybe a couple other points in the game if that i don't know i don't know it's it's a tie it's probably a three-way tie between this item the digging mitts and um and the ball and chain from twilight princess for like most like a useless item outside of its dungeon um i mean this item is so here's the thing it's interesting but what what it is is basically just like a it blows on stuff. It creates a gust of wind. It's a unique item. It's an interesting idea. I appreciate this game. But, I mean, essentially, now you're just playing Chibi-Robo. From what I understand Chibi-Robo being like. Its main function in this dungeon is to blow away... Is to blow away all this sand that's everywhere. <laughs> it's like you're playing, um... It's, it's like you're playing Luigi's Mansion now. You're playing Chibi-Robo now. It doesn't even blow these guys off. The, it like barely blows these guys off the wall. And it doesn't kill them. But yeah, like in case you, I, I, this is why, it's items like this is why the game's so easy to roast. Because as if you weren't already, as if the game didn't already have you, have you like constantly like slowing down, taking pauses, repeating, like repeating acts, repeating actions and stuff like that over and over again, you know, doing, doing a lot of things to sort of take time. They're now asking you to basically vacuum as a main mechanic. <laughs> We get to blow these guys in a more specific direction now, which is which is cool. I do appreciate that. Presumably, bigger piles have more things in them, or more interesting things in them. That's not necessarily true. If 
from what I from what I remember, the item has like no uses in combat either. I I guess I I, I guess I could be wrong. If you can think of a combat use other than confusing the enemy, then you know, let me know. out. Um, something I was going to say was I do appreciate how uh, each dungeon has had a completely unique style though, like visual language to it. Like the uh, the etchings on the walls and stuff have been different. The um, I was gonna say the layouts have been different. The layouts have not been different. Um, the vibe of them has been different, the architecture has been different, the style of the, the symbols, like the symbology and iconography in them have been different. Am I using symbology and iconography correctly? Let me check on that. Let me look that up. The visual images and symbols used in a work of art or study, or the study or interpretation of these things is iconography. A collection of illustrations or portraits. Uh, visual images and symbols used in the work. Okay, so not. So no, that's not that's not wrong. The study of symbols. Oh, symbology is the study of symbols. Or or symbols collectively. The use of religious symbology. Oh, okay. That's not necessarily wrong either. Um. But uh. I think I think more specifically what I what I mean to say is just the <laughs> I do like how when you use it it makes this like holy hymn plays like a, like, a, like a choir singing in the background oh, there we go hmm? oh oh no I'm sorry now we can push this out of the way, because we totally could not have climbed up here with that block in the way. That block was sure just completely halting our progress, and <laughs> Pete's sake. Oh. Okay, little, little overzealous. Oh, get back, bats. I'll clean you off. I'll clean you good. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, they, they are a little um, dazed. I basically made them dizzy. Nice. I'll pop a save for that. So we're back here, but we don't want to be here. We need to be somewhere else. I guess we gotta go back. Again, very strange. This this place doesn't seem to be any bigger or smaller than the other dungeons. So it's a little weird. It's a little strange that they uh, push us back. I mean, I said that they have like like full transitions in between rooms. Unless it has to do with the uh, the, the time shenanigans we're going to be getting up to. Oh, but right, okay.
it's on enough. Oh, it, it does, it would make sense that the uh, scorpions can stand on that. Can I... Do you blow up if I hit you with this? Oh. With two. I guess that makes sense. What were these? Oh, I see another robot enemy type. <clears throat> I guess the... I guess Bemos this time around would be a defense mechanism for the mine. And it would make sense that they would just automatically try to attack us. Given that, uh... Oh, come on, Link. Ow. Stop. I like how they actually don't do damage. If you notice. I think, I think if multiple of them are clinging on to you, then they do damage. Otherwise, they just don't. They just can't manage it. They want to like face hugger you. Oh, oh, it wasn't filled with sand originally. Yeah, I do like how the vibe, I mean, even the enemies you face are different, right? Because we're not facing. When we change the uh, the time, we're not. The blowfish go away, or pufferfish go away. Oh, I understand. Note to self, don't lock onto them. Oh, hey, we've seen one of these pinwheels before. Whoa. Oh, they do shoot beams. It's just like if they hit you with a beam. Sequence broke that a little bit. I'll do anything for freaking crafting materials, though. Whoa. Okay, fast moves. Still haven't gotten a map yet. Oh, how are we gonna fight those guys? Have a, uh, a ranged weapon. We can, we can parry missiles back at them with a wood, with a wooden shield? Huh? Oh. Okay, they, they have a clear cut mark to them. That's so funny. Oh, they drop a lot of money. That was like over 20 rupees. Almost like 30 rupees that I just wasted. Crud. I do like these though. Kind of, kind of like dynamic. Instead of you just standing on one and having uh, the air blow it past, <clears throat> you gotta like follow along with it. Nope. 
sometimes I do feel like there's a bit of a delay with uh, pulling your sword out. Once you have it out, you can attack as many times as you want. It's not even in just eight directions. You can actually, like, if you really tilt the stick, it goes, like, harder in eight directions. It's, like, easier to go in eight directions. But you can go, like, a little bit more nuanced with the cuts, too. Not that you would ever need to, I don't think. <clears throat> yeah, you can see how much, like, nicer and cleaner everything is in the past, obviously. Um, because everything wasn't covered over in sand. I wonder what... I don't remember if they ever explain why the weather got so bad here. I, I, I would just imagine it would have to do with, um... The Moblins kidnapping the robots, breaking them down for pirates, and there's just not being anybody to, uh... So all that's left over are these abandoned mines. They actually back up. What are you- what are you doing? Why are you facing away? Wait, what? Uh, okay. I don't know. Why are they- why are they turning away? No, I want to fight you. I- You know, I keep licking. guys are a little hard. You don't have, you don't, you do not have a lot of time to uh, react once they position their heads uh, lined up. I also, like, I, I would flick the stick. You, you really do have to flick. Yeah, if you if you listen, sometimes it doesn't even come out. Yeah, sometimes you like don't even don't even slash. You gotta you gotta be like you gotta like really flick it quick. Mind if I do, yeah. This is going to be one of the, um, crud. I, I know what that's probably going to be. So we have Beemoses. We have, it's going to be an Armos. That's what, it, that's what they are. A really scary looking one at that, too. Okay. That was rude. I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> don't mind if I do. Can I actually hit this with the bars? No way. Wow. 
I would have just assumed in most cases you can't hit through bows like that. These, um, hmm. Almost, right? Yeah. The almost is in... In Twilight Princess also had a very unique look. They had a very, like, unique face to them that was very much unlike everything else you see in the game. And then, um... Using, like, like shields and, and, like, mallets and stuff. These ones also have, like, that same, like... Unique sort of look. I don't know how to describe it, necessarily. Although with this color scheme too, it's almost like, I don't wanna just say, just say like African and then like leave it. <laughs> that, that's sort of like, that's sort of like a blanket that, that encompasses a large area, but maybe like somewhere from that region. Um, I don't know if that was like what they were going for with this. Target lock on Omos. Granted, the fact that the Beemoses and stuff also did have like a, uh, or, or maybe, maybe it was more of like a, because they have totem poles, right? Totem, totem poles are, well, I'm sure a couple cult, like a lot of different cultures have like something that's like a totem pole. Although that is a, uh, off the top of my head, I know that's like a, that would be like a Native American style thing, right? So I'm not really sure. I am not, um, Super well versed in in uh, other cultures, which is a shame because there's a lot of interesting things to learn about just about everybody out in the, out there in the world, right? So we used to we used to learn a lot about that stuff when um a lot about other cultures growing up in in the, in the younger years and stuff. You have like units on other. Like, I, know, I remember I had to write a paper on, um, Ghana and something else. Like, Ghana and something else. Um, some other group around that same, uh, time period. But I think the focus of, of my thing that I had to, of my thing that I had to do for a summer school class was Ghana specifically. And I remember it being really interesting. I just don't, I don't remember any of it now, though, because when everything's attached to, um, when everything's attached to assignments and stuff like that, you kind of just, it's sort of all the, inf all the actual information, the stuff that you would, that's actually legitimately interesting that you would want to know, it's kind of in one ear and out the other, you know? Um, which is a shame because, you know, the whole idea of school is that you're learning stuff, like interesting things that, that um, sort of expand your view of the world, right? But because everything's just sort of attached to a grade and everything's given, everything's about deadlines and grades and just fin you just sort of want to finish the assignment. And then that leads to, you know, not that I can blame schools specifically for anything that I'm ignorant about, right? Um, especially at this point at the age, I'm like 25. I could very well learn to anything I want on my own. And I do. Like more so than I feel like I ever did before. Um, I just need to learn more stuff about, uh, about other cultures specifically, because I feel like I'm always running into this where everything always feels like it's on the tip of my tongue, and then I keep making like I can only make like general statements of like this feels like something from over here in this whole continent, and then that continent encompasses like any number like twenty different cultures. <laughs> that I'm just like, yeah, this is you could probably put this over there, and I'm sure it'd be fine. Ba basically, what I'm saying is I'd be really bad at GeoGuessr, <laughs> right? Uh. It will tag anything that enters its security perimeter. According to my report, its weak point is the mouth, but it requires some specific measures to make it open its mouth. And for some reason, for some reason... Oh, it has a different face on the other side. Crud.
Oh, there's one on the other side. Oh. Oh, the one, the, that face on that side actually had like fangs, it looked like. Ooh. Oh, it was like looking around. It was confused. Well, that's disturbing. Yeah, they're really interesting this time around. Again, I do say, I will say, fighting enemies is way more interesting because it's way more involved than it ever has been in any of the past games. Um, and that definitely is one of the biggest highlights of this game is that they just, they made the combat way more interesting. Okay, this probably has the most interesting combat. I would even put the combat in this game over Breath of the Wild. Although the, co the combat in Breath of the Wild is also way better than all the other games as well. Not, that, not to say that the other games don't have good fights, like individual fights. Just that they, um, the actual combat mechanics themselves are uh, often not amazing. If you really break down what it all is you're doing. They're more like puzzles, you know? They're more like puzzles as opposed to this game where you actually feel like you are fighting things. You're fighting things and they but they, they they still maintain the puzzle element. Um of like figuring out how to create openings, figuring out um all the different ways to tackle an enemy. They just they, they just mixed act like they just mixed actual combat in with that, which I think is cool. I can't blow all this sand away. I bet I could, but it would probably take a little while. Bada boom. Nice. I believe you just keep rolling. Um, am I just supposed to sprint across this? Yeah, you know, that didn't feel right to me either, <laughs> to be fair. Oh. The dungeon map just tells me this? Can I use, can I use? Oh, because, because I can't. Just go inside him. A place I can't use waypoints. Oh, well. Hello. even be at this point. Whoa. It is weird to just not get a compass anymore. Why remove the compass? Granted, I don't know if you noticed. One floor, just a couple a couple of big rooms. It's it's the same it's the same thing. Even the general shape of the dungeons isn't very, like, interesting or anything. Like, this is just essentially one massive rectangle, which is basically the same thing as the other dungeons. <laughs> now, here's the thing. The quality of the dungeon itself, not bad at all. Hello. <laughs> the quality of this dungeon so far, like, of, of all the dungeons so far, the actual, like, what you're doing, they're, they're fun. They're, they are good, right? But if you think about, like, Think about the fire temple, right? 25% of the fire temple was one big room where the whole thing was running away from a boulder. Excuse me. Thank you.
I couldn't move. There was so much lag. There was so much um immobility after I after I rolled that bomb that I couldn't move out of the way. No, if you could just look down the path, I'm not really sure what the point of putting in wrong turns is. Well, well. So you want to hide it like a single rupee or two along the way, I suppose. It's nothing wrong with that. I don't even know how Link's turning around in these tiny little gaps. Reminds me of an internet historian did a video on a guy who got stuck in a mine shaft. Um, and it was like a week-long process of trying to get him out. <clears throat> really interesting story. Um, very, very... <laughs> a lot of it, a lot of it's very depressing and, and morbid too. Especially towards the end when you learned like... Everything that just started happening to him at a certain point. Um, a like after the whole ordeal. <laughs> it was just really... Really morbid. Um... It is an interesting story, though, like, hearing about, like... Because, like, there ends up being a ton of different people you know, getting involved with the situation. And they're all approaching it from, like, a bunch of different angles. Um, and perspectives that are all, like... Everybody's basically battling to have control over the situation. Meanwhile, there's a real human, human being stuck in a mineshaft. It felt very, uh... Am I not able to crack these pots because they're still- the game still considers them buried? Yeah, that, that is what was happening. That's crazy. I do like how the whole thing is that you gotta try to... You can't see the the spikes under the sand, so you just see it poking out. You don't really need to blow stuff away to reveal the spikes, you just gotta go slow. Oh, fairy. Well, I already have a fairy, but I'll take it. Oh. Oh my gosh, he actually grabbed onto my face. You know how horrifying that would be? Hold on. Oh, no. Oh, I guess, I guess it was still kind of like partway in the animation of, uh... something else. Like a chest or something, right? I knew it. Um... Hmm. 
Oh, was there, was there a button along the way that I was supposed to have hit? Gosh dang it. I think I, think I know. There's like a huge pile of sand that's like untouched practically. Well, maybe this is like a clear the whole room, clean up all the graffiti, and move on. Oh, there it is. Well, that was actually in kind of a random spot. All things considered. <coughs> oh, what am I looking at? Here? What am I looking at here? Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, I, okay. A bit of an order of operations. Oh, 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 this is pretty cool. Yeah, this is, this is pretty cool, actually. We gotta follow along with it. Oh, but like, take these enemies, for instance, right? These, uh... I actually don't know what they're called. So we saw Bemos, we saw Armos, and ob obviously, of course, the ancient uh, te technology world is going to be where those enemies are. Centro. Built in ancient times, it is armed with missiles, fired from a central turret. Flying bombs fire from both si both of its sides. Again, I do- I mentioned this in the last episode. I do love how the further back you go in Zelda games, the more advanced things become. Very slow missiles. Oh, the money. Why do they always put these guys over bottomless pits? At least I got the big one. Oh no, my, look at my money, my rupee count. Oh no. That's a bad omen. It's a bad miracle, they got a name for that? No, thank you. It's a good thing their lasers don't, uh, oh. Ow. Okay, well. It's a good thing those lasers don't hit the time stone, because if I, like, <laughs> if you happen to hit the time stone right now, you'd be so screwed. Oh, we could probably use the Skyward Strike. Well, you can't use the Skyward Strike to do a stab, so it wouldn't really matter. Hallelujah. Oh, that's to get it over here. I understand. Yeah, so they always called these, the robots call these things time shift stones. <clears throat> we don't know what the robots are called, other than just like automaton. Oh, another, another impossible blockade. I forgot that Link, Link has the worst reach out of any human in this world. Ooh, 
gonna assume. Oh, we can actually, we're actually gonna be able to kill this guy. Gonna be... That's where we started? That's not where we started. Okay. Can we go the other way? Do I need to hit you again? I see. And then we have to wait. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, that's riveting. I, I know, I know, I know it sounds like, <laughs> it's, I know it sounds like I don't like this game. It's really not the case. I actually really, really like this game. I am enjoying, and I'm still thoroughly enjoying my time revisiting it. I just, I just, I can see, when you can see, how things could have just been done better, you know? And you really like something, but you can see how it could have just been improved. <clears throat> Got some Deku Tree vibes. Like killing the uh, killing the spiders, but very very different uh, context this time around. It's interesting. What? That was the tiniest gust of wind ever. I was like a foot below it. Are you kidding? Definitely need more monster claws, so that works out. Uh, oh. You don't say. Good thing I still have bombs. Whoa. <laughs> Again, I do like how they don't light until you actually throw them. That does make it a little nicer. It's always an amber relic. I'll never be able to escape it. Okay, so there shouldn't be gust of winds blowing out of pipes now, right? They should all be fixed and clean. Or not. I do love how this thing looks. <clears throat> And if you look, it's got an eye symbol on it. It's very Sheikah. The Sheikah have always been shown to be um, a bit more on the advanced side of things. <clears throat> anything, anything, anything in the Zelda series that's like closer to the gods in any way have always been shown to be more advanced. If you think about the Tower of the Gods, that's where all the Beemoses and Armoses were in Wind Waker. Same thing with Twilight Princess. Temple of Time. It's where all the Beemoses and Armoses were. 
Ah, oh, crud. No, please. Oh, okay, so we can we can keep even with it. We don't get well, we don't get our stamina back. We don't get stamina back. Huh. Weird. Whoa, whoa. Sure, where I'm trying to go. Oh, yeah, definitely where I'm trying to go. Oh, no, I'm not. I just hop right back across. I, I totally. I don't know what I was thinking. I was making that way harder on myself. Almost is in the yeah, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. They always struck me more as like magic based, which made them feel more like they were coming from whatever evil was plaguing that world at the time. Oh, that one's moving around like a Roomba. Oh my gosh, the Beemos has got wheels now? Crud. We're screwed. Oh, hold on. Chest over here? Chest that I missed? How so? Who says? Why, though? See about that. <laughs> Freaking robot symbol, it's so funny. Again, they always place them over pits, but they drop more money than anybody else in the game. Two, three, one. Is this like a code? Two, three, one. Let's remember that. The dreaded blocks, they... <laughs> they block us at every... They, they block us at every path. Everywhere we turn. Frightening. Okay, I guess I'm going this way. Say. Yeah. 
I understand, I understand. You don't no, I I know. I know what we're doing here. You don't gotta You don't gotta chime me every time. Oh it's the order you hit them in, not how many times you hit them. Okay, so I already messed up, but That's fine. That's okay. Now, why would the robots put such a strange, archaic... Such an archaic way of opening a door in their own thing. In their own mining facility. No, I... No, I know. I know that I, I, I piece that together, like, immediately. I don't... You know what? You know what this reminds me of? God of War Ragnarok. Your allies will not shut up. Every single time you're like on the cusp of figuring out a puzzle, there are even moments in the game where they will intentionally, they will speed up the dialogue and jump to future dialogue to have it, to make it up, like, to frame the success of a puzzle around your allies having given you the answer. So instead of you figuring it out on your own. It's baffling, it's so frustrating. There we go. <clears throat> That's what this feels like. They wait just long enough for you to be like, you you have just pieced together the puzzle and then they just give you the answer. It's like, dude, just let me, just let me work. Come on, Nintendo. But th then again, this is when Nintendo was in their, um, was in the most hand holding stage, like phase of their, of their games ever. Uh. Ooh, the other side's scary. The other side has like fangs and stuff. It's kind of spooky. Hard, though. I would say it's much harder to uh, hit the weak point on the ones in Twilight Princess than in this game, for sure. And there we go. What am I looking at here? What, what is this supposed to be? Ancient circuit. Oh, it's just supposed to be circuitry. Made of shining gold. It looks like it's maybe a part from something. The surface is inlaid with circuitry. Okay. Kind of has three prongs, like the uh, the uh, the robot's helmets. So that's an interesting note. Mm. Well, <laughs> well, let's not uh, let's not die so close to the end here. That's one good thing about YouTube, is that people make a lot of, uh, back on the note briefly of, um, people's, uh, <gasps> Zelda, um, people, people's, uh, or, um, of learning new things and whatnot. Um, I think YouTube's a really good source of just, like, getting to learn something new and fun that you never would have thought about before. Um, specifically, there's this one creator. Let me look them up really quick, because I want to make sure I actually... Because she's really good. Um, one, her name's Red. 
That might just be the name of a channel. I don't, I don't think it is. Oh, OSP. Overly Sarcastic Productions. Um, she does a really good job at just... I mean, they explain a bunch of stuff. They, they, they've done a bunch of different things. Not too long ago, they do something, they like, they summarize history, they do trope talks about just stories in general, um, and they, 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 they'll like often link things back around to like old mythology. They just recent, like not too long ago, they did a whole set, like a whole group of videos on um, Norse mythology. Which was super interesting to watch some of those and then play like God of War. Um, oh, they! Uh, oh my gosh, they've been they've been doing a, a series. Their ongoing series right now is that they're summarizing a video summarizing different parts of Journey to the West, which is like like what? which is a story that has been that ha that that has like that establishes tropes and. Um, in, in, in plot threads and things like that that have been used in like a million stories from that from that time from the time that story was made till now um, including a, a lot of things that are used a lot in anime which specifically which is always cool but that's like that's like Sun Wukong and, and his journey with his friends as they go um, try to journey to uh, they're trying to make it to heaven if I remember correctly <laughs> um, yeah and it's it's Hearing it, there's a lot of part, there's a lot of parts to it that feel very much like, well, that feels very, that feels like very much like something I would see out of an like out of a story, out of anime's story, right? And it's like, yeah, because everything, everything, everything traces back to like all stories like trace back to this story. <laughs> it's crazy, but um, yeah, OSP, overly sarcastic productions. I highly recommend them. It's a good way to learn a lot, um, a lot quickly about a billion different things. Um, very good. My friend, my, my dear friend Megan, uh, pointed me in, in this channel's direction. I should really, I should really subscribe. I haven't even been subscribed yet, so I'm gonna do that right now. Because there's a lot of really, really cool things to learn about. And they do it in a way that is both, um, interesting and not too, it's not too dense. They're like, there's very brief, like, in, in the span of like 10 to 15 minutes, like or like 10 to 20 minutes, just sort of like give you a rundown uh, of a certain topic, of an idea of a myth, and you get the the idea of it. Um, and it's always very interesting. So, yeah. And fun. And they also provide some visuals and stuff like that. And their art style is like super cute, super simple. Uh, it makes it, makes it, uh, adds to the engagement, you know? Yeah, it's a fun time. Anywho. Anyway. There was one more chest in here. That's... It's in this room. But it's up here. Hmm. I'm trapped. Oh, we need to go up. I understand. Yeah, so that, that's a good thing about YouTube. Is a lot of uh, very, very knowledgeable people sort of share their... Also, I mean, and also, they, sometimes you just... There's a lot of people who will just give you a piece of history on something that you never would have, like, um... I know Defunct Land does a lot of history talks on... Oh, crud. Oh, criminy. Um... On amusement park-related things. And I want to check out some of those videos at some point, just because, I mean... I don't know. I just, like... I feel like... I just enjoy having a general knowledge. I don't feel too... Like, much like I want to learn a whole bunch about any one thing. I just like like to know a lot of uh, little things about a million different things. That's kind of more my my speed. I feel like. Um. Hmm. 
Whoa, Link! Did you see him do a full turn roll in another direction? Link, for the, for the love of everything, man. There we go. I just wanted to go over here. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's a tiny chest. That's gonna be that's gonna be twenty rupees, which I mean, like. Oh. Oh, you know what? I was, I was thinking earlier. I'm like, I'm surprised that the keys aren't electric keys. <laughs> it's like what. They are. I've just I've just been killing them so quickly that we haven't gotten to see that. Oh, this thing that was blocking our path. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even register what that was. Twenty rupees, wasn't it? Oh well. Or was it five? Was it five or twenty? <laughs> well, whatever. Uh, one moment. Let me make sure. That was everything there was to get and do here, Ancient Circuit. Found containers. Gust Bellows, we got that. Dungeon map. You know, I suppose it does make sense that there would be a bellows in a factory like this. You might need to stoke some flames. It doesn't make no sense, although... Given that the main way we've been using it is to blow pinwheels and... Is to blow pinwheels, clear sand and dust, but then also, like, we've been using it to kill the security measures, like the Hormoses, it's like their main weakness. Why would they also, why would they develop the Gust Bellows? What is the Gust Bellows in the context of this dungeon? Like, I... It's very strange. I mean, what's the point of it in general? It's just odd. Uh, I was, che was checking on something really quick and taking a quick uh, bathroom break. Um, went back and checked on a video that I was uploading. I was uploading a review of Neon White and I was like, man, it says it's an hour, an hour and 47 minutes. I'm like, oh, no wonder. It's. I played it on my computer and I have an ultra wide monitor and a pretty decent computer. So it was a 4K video that I recorded because I played the game at ultra wide. So I was like, okay, this time I'll just make it show it's going to be 4K. I didn't even really consider that, but it's going to be a 4K image or video. That's fine, whatever. Um, because just because of the aspect ratio. Um, but then, <laughs> and I was like, oh man, it took it took like all day for the video to render. And I was like, dang, it's not even that long of a video. It must just be good because it's it's in 4K, right? And then I check I check it after it's finished, and it says an hour and 47 minutes. Which, I, I, maybe it's, it told me that before. I just didn't notice. But so I'm looking at that, and I'm like, hold the phone. I'm like, that seems a little, um, a, a, like a lot, though. You know, doesn't it? I think I'm blown off. Um, seems like maybe kind of kind of a lot, you know. Oh, is this? Oh, the barbed wire is gonna go away. Interesting. Oh, it's a very interesting looking door. I uh, I changed the the color on my on my on my desktop to actually reflect what the game is going, the actual output of the game is gonna look like. This is way brighter now. I usually have it very uh. Everything very, um, sort of, like, yellowed over to, uh, avoid eye strain, since I'm at my computer so often. Okay. Oh. I'm getting rocked. Okay. Um. And, uh. Oh, what was I saying? I was like, okay, yeah, I finally check, 
I finally get a glimpse at the, um, I don't know how I didn't notice it. I finally get a glimpse at the, uh, <laughs> at the, at the, uh, time, how, how long, the length of the video, and it says an hour and 47 minutes. My review of the game <clears throat> was only a 40 minute, I only, it was only a 40 minute video, if that, like, barely that. I'm like, what the heck happened? I check the, um, and I, and I think what happened was when I exported it, <laughs> when I exported it, it, uh, there must have been, like, audio or extra video files that were, like, way further down on the timeline. I forgot to make it stop, start and stop where I put it, like, where I put the source on it. So it just, it's just, it took, like, it went all the way to like wherever those spare clips and files and audio files that I that were on the timeline still were. So it like length it extended the time of it to like an extra hour and a half or so. It's ridiculous. I feel so silly. It took all day waiting for that. Now I gotta like freaking re-upload the video. I gotta re-export the video, which already took. I was wondering the video was taking so long to export too, and. And, like, my computer is, like, is, like, made to export things quickly now. So I was, I was so confused. And now, now it makes perfect sense. I feel so silly. Oh, well. Anyhow, that'll be something that I deal with later. For now. We got a Zelda to go get to. Who should not be... We should not be super far behind. And then again, we had to spend a lot of- instead of just letting us come with her. Uh, even though so supposedly our job is to protect her and we apparently failed, so apparently we're not allowed to travel with her at all after that. Which is kind of a shame. Oh, hold on. Ah, there we go. Found it. <clears throat> Let's see if we can make up for that. I think I remember who, wh which boss this is, but we'll find out. Oh, that's cool. It opens up and the door starts to age. Oh. Fancy camera work. Thousand year arachnid mold arachnid. Oh my gosh, they're playing. This, this boss theme only plays like on a couple bosses in the game. Oh, I actually stopped it. <clears throat> this is my, like one of my favorite songs in the game. It's amazing. I was literally just had this song stuck in my head earlier today. Oh, stabs don't work.
was that really it? Oh man, I was just starting to feel it. We barely got to enjoy the music. Ah, don't worry. That that won't be the only time. The uh, the <laughs> the equivalent of the mo of the den of monsters later on, or the cave of monsters later on, the little gauntlet of enemies that we have to fight later on. That fight theme carried me through that because I had to try and retry that originally when I played the game dozens of times, like like over a dozen times before. I love that fight theme. It's so, oh, it like amps you up. I don't know. <laughs> if that was just the boss theme for every boss in the game, <sighs> would be great. Every, I mean, every, every, every boss theme in the game is great. <clears throat> One more full heart. Oh yeah, second row already. Look at that. Um, I mean, third? Third dungeon? Being on the second row? No. It really depends on the game. An awkward of time. It took a long time for us to start getting a... to the second row of hearts. Granted, we also started at three in that game. So. Hmm. Oh, so this actually was just like a... Oh, this... So, the boss room is, it was actually like a hub. Probably to take you to every other mine in the desert. So this was like a central hub area. This facility, or, or maybe even to send resources back out. Interesting. Oh, that's a nice little detail. That's actually a really nice little touch. Man, that was like a. <laughs> that was like what, like like sub, sub one minute. <clears throat> I mean, that's the thing with with having so much better control over what direction you slash. Bosses like this guy that are all about directional, uh, directional inputs are just way easier. Anyways, with that, time to sit back and enjoy one of the best cutscenes in the whole game. Link look, Link look pissed right there. Holy crud, Link. Oh, I did not remember this at all. Oh, saluting. Are they actually going to... Are these boys going to spring to life? Not a bad dungeon overall, though. No, they're actually just statues? Whoa! Oh, is it like all the crystals? All around? Or is it like stained glass? They just, they just can feel each other's presence. Oh. We can't. <laughs> oh my god, oh, go now. Oh, they interrupt. They didn't let me read. Oh. 
Link? Am I late? <laughs> no, you're right on time. Hey! You must go now. Return to the old woman at the sealed ground. Tell her what happened here. She will know where you must go. And know that we will. <laughs> this isn't goodbye. Time, but instead I was soft. Time for recreation? But next time, I'll do more than just beat you senseless. I'll deafen the world with the sound of your screams. Whew. We won't be following right behind them this time. Oh man, the sequence, it happened so quickly. Everything's, so many things are happening at once. <laughs> that is, gosh, I don't know. Here's what this game does abundantly well, is it sets up moments like that. It builds up to these beautiful, amazing moments that are just mwah, chef's kiss. It's absolute perfection. Um, it's so cinematic, it's so tense. Legitimately, I'm like, I, I, well, the first time I saw that happen, I was like, okay, Impa's dead. <laughs> Impa, Impa just died. Just found out she's Impa, she's dead. <laughs> um, first off, cool way to reveal that it's Impa. Um, things, things become infinitely more cryptic, because Zelda says, you'll need this where you're going. So again, we're still, for some reason, Link is still left in the dark as far as how much information he is being given at any given moment. Um, and then Impa says, the woman, the old woman in the sealed grounds will know where you need to go next. Why? Why is she gonna know after we tell her what happens here at this part? How is she gonna know what happens next? An interesting report master, I can no longer detect Zelda's aura, is the gate they went through. A gate, called the gate, presumably the gate of time that they mentioned earlier, in the Temple of Time. You should be able to piece together, maybe, where that probably went. <laughs> where that probably led to. The moment the gate was destroyed, Zelda's presence disappeared from my readings. You can no longer search for her with your dowsing ability. Which also, that it would also explain Girahim's uh, fury at our involvement, at us getting involved once again. The fact that, and also I like how he heard one, he heard them call our name, and that's why. And that's how that's how he knows our name because if you remember in the fire in the in the Earth Temple, I mean, uh, when we saw him at the end before the boss fight. He said that he's like, you know, I, I, I don't, I'm sorry, this is so rude of me. I don't, re I don't remember your name. I don't remember ever getting your name. <laughs> so this is, so this is the only reason he addressed us by your name here is because he heard one of them say it. Um, and, and now he's got a vendetta against us and he's going to, uh, I think he said, was he said deafen the world or deafen us with the sound of our screams? He's going to uh, commit such excruciating pain upon us that we will be deafened by our own screams. <laughs> Haunting. Um, and then I love, I love them letting you make choices. Cause you can be super stern, serious Link and be like, get out of here. Um, I think what were the choices? The choices, I mean, there's only one choice to make there, right? You can say, get going, saying I'll handle this guy something along those lines to like ser a serious answer a, a, a very like v dutiful answer or an answer that i think is the most fitting for this link the way i always read this link is saying is saying 
It's just it's just asking, am I late? <laughs> after, after after the first time you met Impa and the things that she said to you, coming in here at the last second, saving her life, and then saying and then asking, am I late? <laughs> it's ugh. It's perfection. Some of the best writing in all the Zelda games. I'm not even joking. I love it. And the smoke she gives you, like, no, you're right on. It's like, no, you're right on time. <laughs> but this is a concerning thing. We can't search for her, which means he can't search for her either. The Zelda's companion instructed you to meet the Ancient One in the Sealed Ground. This corresponds with the records in my memory. I propose that we travel to the Sealed Temple. Corresponds to the records in your memory? And a temple, and again, a temple that we went into with no, without the goal of obtaining something, and that we're leaving without having accomplished a thing at the end. Because again, this is not Link's journey. We are just, we are just tailing behind. We are just tailing behind Zelda. Zelda's the one who has an objective at the end of these temples. We're just trying to make sure she gets along the way. And then I love... I love that Zelda knows that Link is present. And, and despite the fact that Impa would... Oh, I didn't actually see how big a bug net was. Holy crud. Despite knowing that Impa would absolutely stop her from running to him again. If Gearhaman hadn't already interrupted. Um... <laughs> despite that, um, she tries to run to him, and then, and then when she goes through the gate, um, Impa has to hold her back, <laughs> like, as she, I like how she interrupts Impa to call out to Link and say, we will meet again, this is not the last time you'll see, we'll see each other. It's so, so touching, it's so sad, it's so sad, because once again, just by just by happenstance, just because, by, like, as if by destiny, we we arrive here once again, just in time to see her leave, and now she's, uh, and now she's presumably, given that we can't, we can't um, read any trace of her anywhere, you know, in the in the current world. Um. We can't read any trace of her anywhere in, in where we in our current uh, in the in the world we currently inhabit, uh, seemingly. Hmm. I heard Cicada, but I could not see Cicada. Um, she is now further from us than she ever has been, which is a sad reality. And now all of Gearham's anger is being turned to us. So. You know, God speed, I suppose. God of speed, I suppose. Ooh. What? You made it inside. You mean to say there's a secret passage I did not know about? Why did you not tell me, bud? I was just about to give up and go home when I heard this, this huge crash. I rushed back to... I rushed back that... To find that the way had been cleared. Mm. I'm going to explore inside. I have to go back inside the sealed ground soon. So it looks like I'm gonna. I'm going to be busy. I feel so bad. I actually feel bad for him when he's like, Bud, why why don't you tell me anything? It's like, ah, uh, I really don't know why I don't tell you anything, man. We know this Link talks. We know this Link actively talks to people. They, they have said as much. We've seen as much. And yet, when it comes to uh, a, a, a lone Goron just trying to explore some some ancient temples... We, uh, we were absolutely useless to him. <laughs> Anyhow, with that, with the, with the path before us blocked, and no direction of where to go next, oh, well, with only a single direction of where to go next, that is where we're going to end this episode. If you liked this, if you enjoyed this, uh, stay tuned. There's going to be plenty more, at least for the foreseeable future. Uh, I've got a lot of other types of videos lined up for February, um, but 
Uh, I will be uploading episodes of this interspersed in between them, a lot of these at a time, and then we'll, occasionally you'll get a random ed emo video of me freaking spouting some nonsense, <laughs> some like weird artsy stuff, a review here and there. Um, but yeah, if you enjoyed this, if you, if you liked this, if you like what's going on here, then, you know, you can uh, drop a thumbs up or thumbs down. If if that's if that's what you, if that's your personal preference, you can uh, leave a comment. You can subscribe and then hit the bell to get notified of more things in the future. And hopefully you will get notified of more things in the future. I have no real control over that, so good luck to both of us, I suppose. Anyways, next time we'll be uh, seeing what what this game has in store for us next. I don't actually remember exactly where we go from here, so that'll be interesting. Uh, however, until then, don't forget to be kind, and don't be afraid to change your mind. See you next time.